Well, it's great to be with you today. Now, this is loud for me because I have a booming voice, so is this too loud for others? Otherwise, we can not tweak things good. No worries. Well, it is good to be with you. My name's uh, Shane Wright. I'm uh, one of the ministers at Maritual Presbyterian Church, and it's a real joy to join you for worship today. And our call to worship, as we think about our great God, uh, it comes from Psalm 62. Uh, the service today, we'll be looking a little bit later at Psalm 4, and we're going to be thinking about where we find our rest. Uh, and this psalm, uh, as we open our service, reminds us a bit of that already. So Psalm 62 from verse 5. Rest in God alone, my soul. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My salvation and glory depend on God, my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts before Him. God is our refuge. Selah. What a great way to start our service as we think about the God who is our rest and how great that God is. And so to start our time together, we're going to sing. So would you stand with me as we sing, How Great Thou Art.
Well, would uh, you join with me as we pray? At the start of my prayer this morning is actually an old Puritan prayer called the Valley of Vision. So we're going to start with that prayer and then continue to pray. Let's pray together. Lord, high and holy, meek and lowly, you have brought us into the Valley of Vision, where as we live in the depths, we see you in the heights. Where hemmed in by mountains of sin, we behold your glory. Let us learn by the paradox that the way down is the way up. That to be low is to be high. That to be broken hearted is to be a healed heart. That the contrite spirit is the rejoicing spirit. That the repenting soul is the victorious soul. That to have nothing is to possess all. That to bear the cross is to wear the crown, that to give is to receive, and that the valley is the place of vision. Lord, in the daytime, stars can be seen from the deepest wells, and the deeper the well, the brighter your stars shine. Let us find your light in our darkness, your life in our death, your joy in our sorrow, your grace in our sin your riches in our poverty, and your glory in our valley. Father, this, these words of this old prayer is our prayer today. As we look around at the world, we see so much strife and struggles. We see sin and sickness, civil unrest and violence, natural disasters. Apart from you, Lord, our lives are shrouded by darkness. We are indeed in the valley. So, Father, would you, through your Son, reveal to us your grace, your riches, your glory, that we might find joy and life and light as we live for you. Father, we do wish to pray for the life of this church here at Neville. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to be building up your saints for works of service that your people would have a heart to grow in their love for you and their love for the people you've placed around them. So we do pray, Lord, for this community here at Nambour, for those who are continuing to walk in darkness, when in Christ they can find light. Lord, we ask for those who would be bold and willing to speak truth into that space, so that people would turn to you and come to know you and rejoice in the freedom they have in Christ through forgiveness and through your grace. Father, we do pray for this nation. Lord, all that's going on in relationship to the COVID-19 virus. Lord, we pray for good decision-making from our leaders. We pray, Lord, for a vaccine to come soon. We pray, Lord, for frontline workers who are dealing with this every day. Lord, we pray that you would bring a resolve. But more than that, Lord, we pray that you would put this nation and this globe on its knees. For so long we have felt so self-sufficient in ourselves that we can make it by in our own strength. And then something like the COVID-19 virus reminds us of our frailty, that we are all vulnerable and we need someone outside ourselves. We need a saviour. So would you, through your providence and your sovereignty, work through this virus? Finally, Father, we pray that shortly as we come to sit under your word, we pray that you will sink your word deep in us. Lord, that your word would work in us and in us produce fruits of righteousness. Lord, that we might see it uh, changing and transforming us to become more and more like your son, Jesus. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. Well, our first reading today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. <coughs> And uh, later in the sermon, we'll come back to this, but this is the reading. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke 
and learn from me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We're going to continue our service now by singing together another great hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Would you stand with me as we sing? Upon us, O Lord, 
you have put more joy in my heart than they have when they when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And may God encourage us with that reading.